Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well with you. Um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus have been strengthened in your court to his will, his purpose. Uh, most importantly, brothers and sisters, I pray that you know he's faithful and he's coming soon, okay? Um, I got a word for you today, brothers and sisters. Um, it'll be a blessing to you. But before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that he has to pour into us today, okay? Let me get my mic here straight. But let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that he has to pour into us today, okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly and Wise Father, we repent of our sins, Lord. Please forgive us our sin. We're coming for your throne. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for who you are. Lord, we pray that you would just minister, minister to our hearts, minister to our minds, Lord. Speak to us from heaven today because we desperately need your presence and we desperately need your word to live. Lord, help us to encounter life today. Help us to encounter you today. Reveal your truth to us today that in all things we may know who you are. Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way. Speak freely that in all things we may be edified in your truth. Thank you for all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour out. In Jesus' person, name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word. Let me set some things up here. Okay. Make sure everything's up. Okay. Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word, okay? Now, <clears throat> I've been spending time with the Lord, okay? And as I've been spending time with the Lord, the Lord been speaking to me concerning, speaking with me concerning his heart. Okay? And the Lord says, son, there's many sacrifices that is made every day of your life. He says, son, there's many sacrifices that is made, that is made every day of your life. And he says, son, so often in this life, there's many things that you can sacrifice for. But he says, son, not many things you sacrifice bring you life in me. He says, son, so often in this life, Many sacrifices are made, but they are dead sacrifices. But he says, son, there's a sacrifice that is necessary to be made for you to be transformed into the glory of my righteousness through my sacrifice. And the Lord says, son, as my children, as my little ones, I want you to flow in the life that is in me. I want you to be alive from the dead and as you are alive from the dead that means your life are not only committed to dead sacrifices but a living sacrifice for my glory and the Lord was speaking to me he said son what do you say what do I say to you he said son be careful how you walk be careful how you live and most importantly use my grace to cause you to be more intimate with me that you may live in that place of secret in your heart towards my will that in all things you want to be engraved in me oh. and then the Lord said to me he said son one thing about being a living sacrifice is that it keeps you in that place of peace it keeps you in that place of intimacy because he said son being a, being a living sacrifice is what reveals to you that you are a child of God and that you are close to my heart. He said, son, in order for a man to follow me, he must pick up his cross. And he said, son, in order for a man to pick up his cross, he must be a living sacrifice for my glory. And then Lord said, son, so often in this life, y'all cherish many things, y'all see many things and y'all keep many things. But he said, son, the most important thing that needs to be kept is my word. He said, above all the things that you would keep, he said, so often you have had things passed down from generations to generations. So often uh, you are given guilt. So often you have re uh, received things um, that have memory in your life, that have a uh, sentimental value to you. And you guard that you keep it because it is precious to you. And he said, son, if you who are earthly would keep something that one day you have it and the next day it, is, it perishes and goes in the fire, how much more should you keep my word that never fades? Oh. 
And he says, son, above all things that should be kept in this life, the main thing that needs to be kept is my word. And the Lord says, speak this to my children. The title of this message is, if you love me, you'll keep my word. <laughs> the title of this message is, if you love me, you keep my word. Oh, man. But the Holy Spirit got so, got so heavy with it. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus was talking to his disciples. Eh? As he was leading them, as he was shaping them, as he was discipling them, as he was leading them by his righteousness, revealing his glory, teaching them about the kingdom of heaven, preparing them for the kingdom of heaven. He said, the greatest evidence that you will be prepared for the kingdom of heaven is when you keep my word. And he said, son, the kingdom of heaven operates in love. And he said, son, the greatest evidence that you are walking in love is when you keep my word. Because my word will keep you from the deception in this life, but my word will also keep you in the one who is life. And the Lord Jesus said, that is me. <laughs> Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is life. And if we say we love him, we must indeed keep his word. For Jesus said, for man have fellowship with darkness, and claim that he walked with Christ, he's a lie because Christ is pure light and there is no fellowship with darkness. And the greatest evidence that we don't fellowship with darkness, brothers and sisters, is when we, when we keep his word. And see, when we keep God's word, we have fellowship with God's word. When we keep God's word, we are in love with God's word. And that word is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord says, son, he says, son, if you love me, you will keep my word. Brothers and sisters, in this hour, there's many things that are about to happen in this seven year period leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus, our Lord and the Savior. And the main thing this world is going to try to make us not do is to keep his word. The main thing that one world government will try to make us not do is to keep his word. And brother and sister, on a daily basis, there's many things that will be pulling at our heart, tug, tugging at our heart. And the main thing it will try to do is keep us from keeping his word. Because the, in this hour, our foundation need to be in Christ. And the only way that our foundation will stand strong is when we keep his word. Jesus is coming back for a bride that is sincere in love with him. He's coming back for a bride that is eagerly longing, waiting to see him. And the greatest evidence that we are longing to see him is when we keep his word. Okay. And keeping his word is not only professing it with our mouth, but professing it by the way we live for his glory. And see, the most beautiful thing is about keeping his word is it keeps you from anxiety. It keeps you from worry. It keeps you from deception. It keeps you from corruption because his word is the perfect righteousness of God. What do we compare the kingdom of heaven to? We compare the kingdom of heaven to a lush grass game, a lush grass green field, turf, swept clean, ready to relax in the pastures. So is the righteousness of God. The kingdom of heaven is like a beautiful lush green field full of fruit with beautiful vegetation. So what do we say? Let us eat from the fruit of heaven, which is the righteousness of God, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord together, to, uh, dwell in the house of the Lord forever in the pastures of heaven. So often in this life, farmers will plant fruit and fears with beautiful pastures. Well, church, as we walk in Christ, it's like we are planted in a beautiful field. As we keep Christ's word, it's like we are planted. It's like we are planted in a beautiful pasture. What do we compare the heart of Christ to? The heart of Christ is like a beautiful field ready to be harvested as we rest in his presence. Oh. And as we rest in his presence, it is the evidence that we keep his word. As we rest in God's presence, it is the evidence that we keep his word. Because as we keep his word, it causes us to rest in his glory. Now, in the spirit, but also and this how forever that is a few years away. Okay. And then the Lord took me to John chapter 12, verse 25 through 22. And this is what it said. Check it out now. I'm going to start at, I'm gonna start at verse 20. And this, this is a very serious account what the Lord said now. This is, what, this is what he said. This is what it said. It said. It said. It said. Now, 
there were certain there, they said now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast then they came to Philip who was from Beth Bethsaida of Galilee and asking and asked him saying sir we wish to see Jesus Philip came and told Andrew in turn and Andrew and Philip told Jesus but Jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified most assuredly I most assuredly I say to you unless grain Good job. oh nice to meet you brother nice, nice to meet you nice to meet you thank you it said um Philip came at Andrew and, and then Andrew told Philip but Jesus answered him saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified most assuredly I say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies it remains alone but if it dies it produces much fruit verse 25 watch this he who loves life will lo he who love his life will lose it and who and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life if anyone serves me let him follow me and where I am my servant will be also if anyone serves me him my father will honor <laughs> brother and sister Jesus said in order for you to keep my word you must follow me but the evidence that you follow me is when you keep my word <laughs> see not only do you need my word to follow me but the same word you need to follow me is the evidence that you follow me as well he said, in, in order for a man to follow me, he must keep my word. And as we follow Jesus, who is God, it reveals to us that we are his disciple and we love him. The Jesus said, there's no greater love, there's no greater love than when one lays his life down for his friends. Jesus said that there's no greater love than when one lays his life down for his friend. When Jesus came into the earth and sacrificed himself on the cross he was giving us an example of how to lay his, your life down for the brethren and Jesus said no servant is greater than, greater than his master so therefore in order for us to walk in true love with Christ we must lay down our life for him because as we lay down our life for him it is the evidence that we are in love with him because we keep his word because laying our life from down for him is a commandment Laying our life down for him is a commandment. Why? Because Jesus said, love thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, it is impossible to truly be in love with God and not lay your life down. Loving God requires you to lay your life down. If we don't lay our life down, then we're not truly in love with God. Because as we lay our life down, we begin to understand the love of God. We can't love God until we begin to understand his love. And in order for us to understand his love, we must lay our life down. And as we lay our life down, the Holy Spirit revealed the love of Christ in our heart that we may truly know how to walk in love with God. Okay. So when, we, when God said, I want you to walk in love with me, he was not just saying walk in love, uh, walk in love from a physical point, but he's saying walk in love with me. The same way a couple is married, they are in love with their spouse. Well, Jesus is the spouse church. I mean, Jesus is the spouse of the church. So therefore, Jesus said, listen, I want you to walk in love with me. Yes, I want you to physically walk in love with people, but I want you to walk in love with me from the heart. And he says, son, as you keep my word, you walk in love with me. As you keep my word, you walk in love with me. And my word permeates you from all unrighteousness. So what do we say? The gospel is Christ. The gospel of Christ Jesus is the revelation of heaven. <laughs> the gospel of Christ Jesus is the revelation of heaven. And as we get a revelation of heaven, it helps us to be permeated by his word, transformed by his word, and that word keep our soul from all unrighteousness. So what do we say? Let the love of God fill our heart that we may be a living sacrifice because we are desperate to keep his word. As we walk by the spirit of heart, the spirit of God, he gives us a, he gives us an appetite for the righteousness of God. And as he gives us an appetite for the righteousness of God, then keeping the word of God is no longer a burden, but a pleasure. When God love fill our heart and we, we are submitted to the spirit of God, keeping God's word is no longer a burden, but it's a pleasure because we desperate to dwell in his house forever. 
A heart that is desperate for God is a heart that pleases God. A heart that is desperate for God is a heart that pleases God. Why? Because a desperate God, a desperate heart, keep God's word because that heart know God's word is the only way to life. A desperate heart keeps God's word because a desperate heart knows that God is the only true hope and the only way to life. And that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord, our, our Lord and Savior, the only way to heaven. Okay? So Jesus said, if anyone who serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, my servant will be also. So Jesus was telling us, as we pick up his cross, Jesus is seated right hand of the Father in heaven. So as we pick up our cross, we will reign in his glory forever. So as Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, so are, so so do we have a place prepared for us in that in heaven because he said, My servant will be where I am also. So what do we say? Church, let us walk with Christ, let us walk in Christ that we may dwell with Christ forevermore. Why? Because that is an eternal promise that this world cannot take away. Okay. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my word. Why? Because love is an action. Okay? Jesus said, let love be without dissimulation. Let love be true in deed and action. Well, the greatest deed that we can, the, de the greatest deed that God see in us when we love him is when we keep his word. Jesus said, Jesus said, how such a great joy it is when I see my children walking in truth. Well, the only way to walk in truth if it is when we keep his word. So what is, what is the what is the verse? Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my word. Why? Because he said, if you keep my word, you will follow me to glory. If you love me, you will keep my word and follow me to glory because my word is what leads you to glory. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, Jesus is the word of God. That means the word is the way. The word guides you in the way. The word leads you through the way. By the Spirit, and that in all things you may know God. And as we know God, we don't perish. Why? Because God said, it is not my will for no one to perish, but all men to come to a knowledge of Jesus. So, when we get to get an understanding of who God is, we don't perish because now we have encountered his word that keep us in the life that is in his son. Okay? The next, the Lord Jesus took me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 10. And this is what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 10. And this is what it says. We're going to start at verse, we're going to start at verse 8. Check him out. I said, we are confident. I'm starting at verse 6. It said, so we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent. While we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Church, this is the hour for us to walk by faith and not by sight. Why? Because in this hour, the one world government, the media and false prophets have, are, are got an assignment in the spirit to make us walk according to what we see instead of what we hear from God. Church, this is the hour for us to walk according to what we hear and not according to what we see. Therefore, in order to walk according to what we hear from God, we must keep his word. Because as we keep his word, we can walk by faith because we can see him through everything he's saying through the spirit of his word. Jesus, man. And that word is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Now let's watch it now. He said, we have, and why, why is this important? Because as we walk by faith and not by sight, it builds confidence in his word. As we walk by faith and not by sight, it builds confidence in his word that make us keep it even more. As we walk by faith and not by sight, it, his word anchor us in his heart. That it increases our pursuit of him and make us keep it much more because we have full confidence in who he is. So what do we say? Let us keep God's word because God's word is an instrument that continues to be a confidence by faith because his word never fails. Okay? So what do we say, brothers and sisters? What do we say? We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. The judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleased to God. Brother and sister, there is an aim that we need to be living by. So often in this life, we set goals 
things, we set goals, we set targets and say, listen, by this, by this month, by the end of this year, this is the, this is the place I want to be. This is the target where I want to be at. Okay. And we set our aim to try to make that target and hit that target. Jesus said, if you who are earthly will set goals to try to hit the target in this life, that face, how much more should you set an aim for heaven and try to hit that target by being the gospel? Oh, man. And Jesus said this right here. He said, make this your aim that you live to please God. Make this your aim that you live to please God. Oh, make this your aim that you live to please God. He said, therefore, we make our aim whether present or absent to be well pleased to God. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done and by the according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Brothers and sisters, there are heavenly rewards for us in the kingdom of God. So as it is written, so as it is written in the scriptures about the judgment seat of Christ in our Bible, I just read. So as the Lord took me in the spirit, took me in, he took me in the spirit. And show me symbolism of the judgment seat of Christ. God took, God took me in the spirit, and there was a man of God. There was a man of God standing before the judgment seat of Christ. And because the man of God was faithful in his life, when he went through the new heaven and new earth that came down for God out of heaven in the vision, the man of God was reigning because he was faithful to this, faithful to God in this life, this age that we're currently in. Because it didn't matter how he suffered, he was aiming to please God. You didn't even see. Brothers and sisters, it was written over 2,000 years ago about the judgment seat of Christ. And God took me in the spirit and showed me symbolism of the judgment seat of Christ. I seen a new heaven and new earth coming down from God out of heaven. And Jesus said, son, make this your aim. Church, let us make the new heaven and new earth our aim. Let, let us make pleasing the heart of God who is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us make our aim, which is to please his heart. And the greatest thing that pleases his heart is when we keep his word. Because if we keep his word, it is a testimony that we love him. When God see us keeping his word, he's saying, my child loved me. Why? Because it takes his love to fulfill his love. Man don't have love apart from Christ. But now in Christ, man have the love of God because the love of God who is in Christ is in man through the spirit. It takes the love of God to fulfill the love of God because man can't love God on his own. So when we keep God's word, it manifests his love, shapes us in his love that in all things we know him because his love is at work in us. And now we love him through him and his son. Oh, man. Why? That in all things we may be little children. For Jesus said, can no man enter the kingdom of God unless he is a child? Well, the greatest evidence that we are a child is when we keep his word. That's why being reborn of the spirit is very important because only the Holy Spirit helps us keep his word. Why? Because scripture teaches us that the Holy Spirit brings it to remembrance everything that Jesus has taught us. So as we walk this life and as we are in the Bible, in his word, the Holy Spirit is consistently reminding us of who Jesus is, everything that he stands for, everything that he said that in all things we may aim to please God. So what do we say? If we compare the... If we compare the word of if, if we if we compare the word of God to us target, then let then let every day we try to hit it by living in a deep posture of devotion to his will. Let's see. If the heart of God was a target, let us live every day aiming to please his will by being full of beat to the gospel, by yielding to his spirit that in all things we're desperate for his presence. And as we are desperate for his presence. We'll never be the same, brothers and sisters, because in him, we are new creation. Okay? And the Lord said, for we must all appear for the judgment seat of Christ. The question is, how will you appear when you stand before God? <laughs> how will you appear? How will I appear when we stand before God? Well, it depends. If we obey the gospel because only by the gospel are we transformed into the righteous power of God through the one who is power and that one is Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior okay? next the Lord took me next the Lord showed me uh, tongues of fire 
Okay. Next, the Lord, in the book of uh, Acts, it talks about when they was in the upper room, tongues of fire fell for heaven on them. Well, the Lord said, son, compare my presence to the upper room. He said, son, whenever they went into the upper room, it was my presence. It was the fire for heaven, the fire from heaven fell on them by my spirit in that upper room. He said, son, my presence is my, he said, son, my presence is like that upper room and my presence is beyond the upper room. He said, son, my presence, my presence is like an upper room. And whenever that man go up into that upper room, my presence, then his tongues of fire fall on him that he may forever speak my glory and boldness by my spirit. The Lord said, my presence, the Lord said, my presence is like an upper room. He said, in this hour, in this seven year period, leading to the second coming of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In my church, in my remnant, he said, the church won't be weak in this hour. My church is going to be radical. And he said, my presence is going to be like an upper room to the church. And whenever they look to me, fire will fall. Whenever they look to me, fire will burn everything in them that is not right. And they will run radical, telling everybody about who I am and my coming. The Lord said, son, my presence is a upper room. And he said, son, think about it. When they, he said, back in those times, son, I would, I would have him. They would put a mark across the door during those times of persecution. They would have a mark across the door to let them know that they followed the way of not. That, that if they followed the way of not, mm -hmm. he said, "Son, whenever there's a vault, whenever there's a secret place, there's a password to get into that place." He said, "Son, the password to the upper room is when you keep my word." <laughs> he said, "As you keep my word, you will consistently live in the upper room. It won't just be something you go in and go out, but as you keep my word, you will live in the upper room, and my upper room will keep the fire of my burning on your mouth." He said, son, whenever you walk, he said, son, whenever you keep my word, you, it's, you will live in the upper room in the fire of heaven. The fire of my word will always be on your mouth because you, truly, because you are truly in love with my glory. Let me slow it down. He said, son, whenever you keep my word, your life will, be a, your life will become an upper room in my presence. That every time you speak and every time you walk. The fire of heaven, the fire of my word will be on your tongue and you will speak boldly the mysteries of my name. The Lord Jesus said, my name is Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, right hand of the Father in heaven. Jesus said, whoever keeps my word, their life will become a upper room that the fire of my words will always be on their tongue, will always be in their belly, and they will live by that fire transforming their life from the inside out that in all things they will be desperate for me because they have been given over to the life that is in me and they don't want no other place but me. <laughs> so what do we say? Let God be praised and worshiped forever because he's worthy of all praise, okay? So brothers and sisters, what do we say? The Lord took me in the, the Lord took me in the spirit and as he took me in the spirit, he showed me a, a burning letter coming from heaven. As our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me, took me in the spirit, he showed me a burning letter coming from heaven. And the Lord said, son, in this hour, in this seven year period, leading up to my second coming, he said, son, my word will be like a burning letter. He said, son, in this hour, my word will be like a burning letter. And anyone that come in contact with my word will be burned in their heart and turned to my glory because I am a consuming fire. The Lord Jesus said, in this hour, my word will be like a burning letter and every man that read it will be transformed. But also, in this hour, my word will be a burning letter. A burning letter, and anyone that don't, don't do not obey it will receive severe judgment because my word is a consuming fire. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the Lord in this hour got a burning letter, and it filled with His love. The question is, what side of that letter will we be on? What side of that level will, letter will we be on? Will, it, will we be at the front because we were submitted to His will? We was anchored at his feet or we'll be on the backside where judgments come because we did not love the truth why because the greatest evidence that we love the truth is when we keep his word because his word is worthy of being kept because his word is eternal life and that word is christ jesus our lord and savior and then the lord said to me act four he said son in this hour i'm increasing boldness in my children he said, son, in this hour, I am increasing boldness in my children. And the only way to receive that boldness, the only way for that boldness to be activated 
is when you submit yourself to my spirit. Because he says, son, as you submit yourself to my spirit, you keep my word. And as you keep my word, boldness will organically come out of you because it's burning inside of you. And when it's burning inside of you, you can't contain it because it's deep in your bones. And when it's deep in your bone, it's so engraved in your DNA and the spirit that in all things, you speak to please God, you walk to please God, you live to please God because you know he is the only thing that is worthy of pleasing because he never fades and he lived forever and he have given all things for us, even to the death of his son on the cross. And that son is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And then the Lord says to me, he says, son, the time of restitution is here. The Lord Jesus said, behold, I'm coming quickly. The Lord Jesus said, I am a few years away. We are in that seven year period leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus. And the Lord Jesus said, the time of restitution is here. Jesus said, I'm a few years away. And he said, who will be that faithful and wise servant to keep my word? Why? He said, because I love you. And he said, because I love you. He said, he said because I love you, there's a desire a deep desire. The Bible teaches that, that the Spirit searches the deeper thing of God. The Holy Spirit knows the deeper thing, the deepest thing of God's heart, His mind. The Holy Spirit is God. There's only one true God, and His Spirit searches the deepness of His heart, the depths of God's heart. Let me give you an example. God is the eternal God, lives forever, and the Holy Spirit searches His heart, know the deep things of God that is eternal that no man know. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, the greatest longing of God's heart is when we keep his word. Because when we keep his word, it shows that we appreciate the sacrifice that he gave us that he did not have to do. So what do we say? Brother and sister, let us walk in a way that keep his word, that we may be prepared for his second coming. Because do we know there's a lot of things happening in this hour, brother and sister, concerning one world government. A few years away. In a few years, they will begin to roll out the mark of the beast. Here what the Holy Spirit sent to the church. In a few years, they will begin to roll out the mark of the beast. Everything you see going on in America, everything you see going on in Europe, everything you see going on in the Middle East, these people are setting up to eventually roll out the mark of the beast. And hear what the Holy Spirit said. Keep my word and you will prevail because you have already won the victory in me. Brothers and sisters, don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. Stay away from idols. We are living in the hour of one world government. Everything that is going on in the media, the news, everything right now, the only thing that's going on, here's what is going on in spirit. Okay? Revelation 13 is what is going on in spirit. Nothing else is happening right now but Revelation 13. Every system that is being put in place, everywhere corporations are moving, everything that all elite people, globalists are doing right now is one thing one world government every agenda they're pushing every regulation they're signing the only thing that they're doing right now is enslaving the world is in globalism and brothers and sisters in order for us to know these things we must keep his word therefore let us keep his word let us look at the book of revelation brothers and sisters don't think that these things are not happening by accident don't think that these things are going on are happening by chance brothers and sisters these things are designed and these men, hands of wicked men, are doing evil things. Okay, why? Because, brothers and sisters, we are at the sixth trumpet. There's only one trumpet left, the seventh. Let us prepare. Let us not be afraid. Let us not be worried. Let us indeed keep his word because that's the only thing that will keep us in this hour. In 2021, moving forward, you're going to see a greater call of one world government, especially after this night, next crisis. You finna begin to see a great call on globalism. And you finna see leaders that you thought you had respect for calling for globalism. You're gonna see many world leaders calling for dictatorship out of a out of a token of transparency. In this hour, in this seven-year period, period leading up to his second coming, you finna see world leaders, some in America, some around the world, they're gonna call dictatorship transparency. 
they're going to call hear what the holy spirit said to the churches in this hour world leaders is about to call dictatorship transparency they're going to say we're going to need a sense of control to control the people so we may all walk in peace and it could be a false peace brothers and sisters that is what is going on right now hear what the holy spirit is saying to the churches you're about to see world leaders call dictatorship transparency and people do not love the truth will give in to dictatorship calling it out of a transparency of safety and it will be completely false and a false deception and a, a completely false and a deception so what do we say brothers and sisters the king jesus is coming and it's very important that we keep his word he's a few years away let us prepare church if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with the Spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only Son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Make sure you're getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when they baptize you, make sure they baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. Okay? Brother and sister, be encouraged. God grace, he got grace for us. If you fall, if you made a mistake, get back up. Get back up. God forgive you. God don't, he's not a God that beat us over the head with everything we do wrong. But he do expect for us to repent when we do do wrong. He love us. He want us. He don't want none of us to perish. So if you have fallen, you have made a mistake, get up, brother and sister. He's calling you to himself. He's calling you back. If you've dealt with church hurt, if false leaders have misrepresented God, it causes you to look a certain type of way. It was not God. It was a man. He's calling you. He's wooing you. He's drawing you to himself. He wants you. He loves you. He said, come to him. So what do we say? Let us use God's grace as an instrument that leads to obedience and not take advantage of our God's grace and try to live, what, live whatever type of way we want. Because he did not give us a, his grace to live in the type of way we want, but he gave us his grace for us to live the type of way he wants us to live. Okay? God did not give us his grace for us to live in the type of way we want. But he gave us his grace to live the type of way he wants. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, in this hour, please read Revelation 13. Please read 1 Corinthians 5. Please get you some reading in the book of Revelation because you're going to need it for this hour. Because everything in this seven year period, everything that's going to take place, it's going to be happening right out of the book of Revelation. And also things that have been written in the prophets Like Isaiah and men of the old prophets So what do we say brothers and sisters Let us gear up It's time to see the king okay? So what should our mindset be Church we should rather have nothing in this life And be with Jesus Than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus Because true success is not Because true success is not having an abundance of things in this life But true success is being retrieved By the one who will receive you into life when he comes because we can have all of these things, but when he come, we don't go with him. I don't care how successful we was in his life. When he come, we don't go with him. Then we was a failure because we did not fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart and truth and in the spirit from the testimony of his son, Jesus. But we can did none of these things. We, we couldn't, we, we didn't have to do great exploits and none of these things. But when he come and we go with him, we will, that means we were more successful than billionaires in this life. Why? Because we fulfilled our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart in truth and in spirit, brothers and sisters. So what do we say, church? It's time for us to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here, because the end is now. America, America, America. It's time for you to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. America, judgment is on the land. And God is not pulling it back to his second coming. Judgment is on this world. And God is not pulling it back to his second coming. Repent, America. Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. And I pray that it keep you in everlasting life. 
May the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus be with you to the end of this age. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Goodbye.